These were the weapons. They took their toll. Left the marks on the victims and the times. Those strange, nightmarish, lawless years known as the 20s. This gun, tagged, source, found by Sergeant Barney Ruditsky in an alley at 117 Clinton Street. Owner, unidentified. That was my report. The report was a phony. I didn't find it in an alley. And I knew who the owner was. But by the time I caught up with him, it was too late to return it. He was dead. My name is Barney Ruditsky, 20 years police department, city of New York. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Pavlock. Hello, how are you? Come on in. Hey, Max. Hey, meet my partner, Max Field. Mr. Pavlock. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Huh? All right. Family all right? Mm -hmm. Waldy and Tommy. Hmm? Mr. Ruditsky. Yeah? I... Uh, all right. All right, let's, uh, let's go in here. Catch for me, will you, Max? Sure. What's the trouble? Tom? Come on, you can tell me. You know I'll do anything I can to help you or Tommy. You were always a good man to my Tommy. You talk to him like you're his father, but he ain't listen, Mr. Ruditsky. You tell, don't go with the bombers. He ain't listen. Yeah, I, I do. I try to keep my eye on him, but also I understand his problem. You know, not being born here, and he, he's trying so hard to be accepted, and all he can find is a... Today I find it. A gun in his room. I, I, I beg from Tommy. I say, please. Be good boy. Listen to Mr. Rutitsky. Get get nice job. Don't go with the bombers. Why this happened to my Tommy, Mr. Rutitsky? Does Tommy know that you found the gunner's room? No. Look, Mrs. Pavlak, I uh... I don't want you to, to, to come here anymore. You see, I, don't you worry about it now. And I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it, but uh, you mustn't come here to see me anymore. If someone saw him, saw you come in here, you know, it, it might mean trouble for him. If you want to see me, you you telephone, you understand? But, but don't come here. Yes, I understand this, this bad thing. Tommy Pavlak, 19 years old, born in Warsaw, Poland. Father dead. Brought to America at 13. A stranger in a hostile world. Perfect material for the mobs. So anyway, there's this old dame. See. She's coming out of Siegel Cooper. She's carrying a bag on her arm, like this, see? So then Fleisch comes up from behind, see, and he gives it a shove. And the old dame, she chokes like a herring, see, and then she swings around. And then Fleisch makes with that little bow, you know. I'm sorry, lady. <laughs> <laughs> then I come up from behind, see, and I cut the strap from her arm, and boom, I'm off, running in the crowd, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. No big deal. 27 bucks? No big deal. Ah, uh, come on now, what's the matter? You do better. Big deal. Big deal, big deal, big deal. Hey, you guys seen Puggy? No, we're waiting. Puggy says for us to wait here for him, so we're waiting. He got a job for you guys? I don't know. You say something to you? Huh? Well, he only said for me to be here. I think he's got a trick for Tommy. I know he'd give him a piece yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, 32. Some big deal. Well, why don't you shut up? Drop dead. Hey, Schluck. 
Give me a corned beef and a Dr. Brown. Yeah, how do you guys like that Legs Diamond, huh? Seven slugs in him and he stands up. Pop! Ah, seven slugs and he stands up. Yeah, but little Augie catch so much lead they can't even lift him up. <laughs> Sick deal. Pablo, come on. What for? That's right. That's right. What for? Ask him. He got a warrant. Did you say something, young man? No, no, I wasn't. I, I didn't say. I wasn't talking to you. Where'd you get it? Huh? Who gave it to you? Gave me what? A gun. Where did you get it? A gun? What gun? I don't know what you're talking about. What gun? This what... gun. This gun. Now, where did you get it, Puggy? I never saw that gun. Your mother found it in your room. She turned it into me. Well, look, suppose I run a check on this. Find it's been used to shove somebody across. You realize the spot you're putting your own mother in? Listen, kid, you're in trouble one way or the other with me or with those punks you're running with. Now, come on, make your choice. Tommy, come on, tell me. Where'd you get the gun? Puggy, is that what you're worried about? No. I'll take care of him. Sit down there, Tommy. I want you to sign this. What's that? Well, you can read, can't you? It's an admission, possession of a gun. No. Listen to me, Buster. You sign it. Or I'll take you and your mother in for possession. Tommy. Tommy, do like he say. He help you. He help you. All right. Now I'll tell you how. You get off the streets before 11 o'clock at night, you understand? If I catch you once, I'm going to hang this rap on you. Two years. Elmira. The way you're heading now, you're morgue fruit. Maybe you'd be better off in Elmira and laying on some police slab with a couple of slugs in your head. Miss Pavlock, I have a friend. He's manager of the sports goods department. Want to make his department store? Tommy goes to work there Monday morning. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And we'll make a good kid out of him, even if you have to break his back in the process. No. Better break his back than your heart. Nice. Mama, you want to get me killed? You go to the cops, you turn in a gun on me. You know what that was? He made me sign, Mom. You know what that was? Puts me right in the middle. Right in the middle, Mama. I can get hurt. I can get killed, Mama. And you don't butt in, Mama. What's the matter? Fight. Every time I come home, fight. What's the matter? So I, so I don't like it. Gee, she has no lies. One revolver, be able to for you. She has one revolver to find your routine. Oh, God. 
What gun? What are you trying to do? Get me in trouble? Listen to me. I drive a mail truck. United States Government of America. Mail. Money orders. You get yourself a jail. Waldy Pavlock's brother with a gun. Do you know what? What are you trying to do to me? Stay out of my way. You're leaning on me. I'm not a kid anymore. You're the... You're That's your fault. I work all day. Ten hours a day I work. Pushing a ten-ton truck. Heavy mail bags. I work, I work, I work for what? Your sweet little baby Tommy with a gun. Your fault. Go ahead. Go. Go inside and kiss him. Tell him everything is all right. Tell him he's your sweet little baby. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the whole thing. All right, so then Radisky, see, he comes in, see, and he starts a whole... Yeah, yeah, just took him like that. What for? I don't know, I don't know. Look, I said to him, I said, you got a warrant cop, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Argo here said, you got a warrant cop, but I don't know. I told him, meet me here with the piece. You have the piece on him? I don't know. Maybe they're holding on possession. I go call Flexi. Tell me. He's out. He's. Hey, you're out. What happened? They walk you over? All right, tell me. What? Tell me. Oh, Rudisky. I don't know, Puggy. Rudisky, he just come in here and took me. Why? I just tell you, I don't know. Hmm. Took you in Clinton Street? Yeah, Clinton Street. Work you over? No, uh, no. He's... So what did he take you in for, a pinochle? Oh, you're just fishing, you know. I told you to meet me here with the piece, no? Yeah, that's right. You told me So that... how come Raditzky let you walk when he finds the piece on you? Oh, he didn't. He, he didn't. He, he pushes me into the prowl car, see? And quick, I get the piece. And I shove it into the cushion seat, see? So when he, he shakes me down in the squad room, I'm clean. So now you ain't got no gun. So how could I? I just tell you, I... It's in Rodisky's car. Buggy. Yeah. You've got a trick for me tonight. Yeah. Maybe I... Well, you get aroused. And... I don't know. I just don't feel good about it tonight. But I feel good about it. Puggy, whatever the job, it don't matter. I go along, now you know that. You know it. But tonight, I lose the peace, and I... Take it. Puggy, maybe they got a tail on me. Maybe you're playing both sides of the street. Maybe you're making time with Raditsky for small hunks of information. No. Puggy, how can you... Now, would he come in here right in here in front of Argo and Flesh? I'm... If that were true? I don't like to believe it's true. But I don't know. Did your old lady go see Raditsky today? No. No, she didn't. That's a lie, and that's a lie. All right. It's a lie. But make me believe it's a lie. How? You're going to do that trick tonight. Then maybe I'll feel good about you again. Maybe I'll even feel good about your old lady again. Shopping every day on Orchard Street. In and out, all those push carts. And those trucks. And all like that, up and down. Accidents. Every day. All right, here's the trick. You know where Little Itch lives. This afternoon, he picked up a package of white stuff from Morelli. Tomorrow, he delivers it to Zelig. But you hit his room tonight, 1.30. You meet me, 1.15 Rivington, on the roof, 2 o'clock. 
You give me the package. I'll take care of you tomorrow. A good score. Little Itch won't be home. He'll be playing club with me. But if he is home, I'll feel even more good about you if you hit him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, look, please don't worry. I promise you I'll tell Barney the minute he comes in. Yeah, the very first thing. All right, goodbye. Barney. Yeah. Uh, Miss Pavlov just called. Get Tommy snuck out again. Sounded real scared. I had a feeling. I had a feeling the kids terrorized. You know, there's a push set for tonight. Hey, book him, will you? It'll be a mighty squeal. Yeah. Take your head off. I knew the kid was being pushed into a trick. I had to find somebody to open a door for me. To get to Tommy before they shoved another gun into his fist. I had all the spots. The delicatessen was closed. The pool room, the Rathskella were open, but nothing. I didn't like it. it fell ominous. And I knew time was running against me, against me and Tommy, until I hit the National Theater on Houston Street. Use maybe two, three ounces white stuff, but pure. Where I'm going to get two, three ounces? Pure. You're middleman of a Zelig now. So go home and nibble off a piece for yourself. You trying I should get hit? You got plenty of sugar now? So two, three ounces in one load. Zelig never know the difference. Tomorrow? Now. I'll wait. And another C when you deliver here. So wait. Well, Mr. Zargo and Fleisch. You boys should be ashamed of yourselves. Isn't it past your bedtime? Gentlemen, I just looked at Mr. Roditsky's face. I give you a small hunk of fatherly advice for free. Whatever Mr. Roditsky wants to know, you tell him. Take off your hats. Where's Tommy Pavlik? Hmm? He's pulling a trick for Puggy, isn't he? All right, you're gonna tell me where and when. The locker room? Bell, keep this other one cool. All right, Argo, I told you better tell Mr. Rodisky what he wants to know. You're gonna tell us. Where's Tommy? Where is he? No. Take your pick, Mike. You're gonna sing or else? You're gonna wish you sang. Where is he? Huh? Come on, boy. Come on, George. Where is he? I don't know. Where is he? Now, come on, talk. You want to feel this in the back of your hair? Who said I'm going to hit you? What, are you afraid of this? Huh? Have you ever felt one back in the back of your hair there? Come on! Uh, I don't know. I don't know! Oh, no! Look out for that rat behind you! Please, Mr. Radinsky, I got a bad heart. I, I've got a bad heart, please. Come on, come on, I'm Please, Mr. Radinsky, I, I got a bad heart. I tell you, I, I don't know. He meets Puggy. 
Puggy, two o'clock. Where? Rivington. 115 Rivington. On the roof. Puggy, push Tommy. Give him his gun. Please, Mr. Radinsky. job. Only want to get you here alone. You tell me my mother. Accidents. Who you think, who you think you are? Now listen, don't shoot. Don't. Listen to me. Now don't, don't. You think you can push? You tell me my mother and I go... So he, he shot Puggy. I, I got there too late to stop him. But in my book, the little rat had it coming. One thing, I uh, I could have hit Tommy. I could have picked him off up there on the roof, you know, but for some reason I didn't squeeze the trigger. Well, I guess I took the chance because I don't think you'll ever hurt anybody else, Mrs. Pavlock. Never again. And I think you've come home. Sure, it's not all his fault, Mrs. Pavlock, you understand? You know, everybody leaning on him, me, all of here, Puggy. Boy's trying to find a way out. And... Mr. Roditsky? Yes. My brother Tommy. Now maybe he's... Maybe he's gonna go to the... He was pushed, threatened. Your mother was threatened. He was threatened. I'll testify to that. Detective Medisky here? Talk here, Wally. Yes, O'Neill. Uh, Detective Steele sent me over to get you, Bonnie. Yeah, why? You know a kid by the name of Tommy Pavlock? Mm. Shot Puggy Barish. Well, the kid's in the station house now. He walked in. But he won't talk to nobody but you. Okay, thanks, Sonny. Okay, buddy. Yeah, now you see, huh? Everything's gonna be all right. Hi, Wally. It would be Tommy versus the state of New York for manslaughter. He'd get five to ten. Tough, but the law can't permit any individual to act as judge, jury, and executioner. I'd keep in touch with the kid as he did his time. With the right help and encouragement, now maybe someday he'd consider it a cheap lesson.